So I already did my uh, pre-doctoral work, my PhD work at King's College, um, King's College Hospital, and that involved looking at uh, mechanisms involved in heart tissue damage, actually not to do with liver completely, um, but the side part related was obviously looking at alcohol related damage to heart tissue and we were very interested in looking at protein metabolism, protein damage and the biochemistry behind that. That eventually led me to my postdoctoral research in Wake Forest University um, in North Carolina where we can study much more in detail about mechanisms involved in liver injury mm -hmm. due to alcohol abuse, uh, specifically focus on mitochondrial damage and how the mitochondrial ribosomes are particularly altered with chronic alcohol damage really and we use a lot of novel kind of biophysical techniques to look at the structure function alterations um, to the ribosomes which kind of explains the liver injury you might get due to alcohol abuse and since then I've um, established my lab up in, in London University of Westminster and we've continued a lot of the work there specifically looking at alcohol related injury um, to the liver but also looking at um, just NASH as well and fatty liver in general as well. So I guess in the, in the UK we're slightly different to the rest of Europe in that we have a high uh, kind of binge drinking population and that's been ongoing quite highlighted for a number of years in the press and in the news constantly really about um, different parts of the UK, certainly the northeast and northwest and parts of London for example where drinking at the young age is quite inherent and built into the culture and that eventually seems to have got away from it for a number of years, but more recently people are drinking much more excessively in high concentrations. And that's led to a recent rise, rapid rise, in alcohol-related liver injury. So it's not just prone, to, so it's not, in terms of age-wise, it's not just young people, but more recently across all age spectrums really, as well. Even the kind of 60s plus are drinking quite excessively. I mean, our, yeah, our reach is, it comprises a mixture of both kind of in vitro, um, in vivo work as well as obviously um, human subjects as well. And the human subjects um, is mainly focused on a UK based population. We are doing collaborations in Germany as well. Um, so there is some cross collaboration there. And we are looking for new biomarkers also to try and predict um, the extent of liver injury. So we're at a very early stage whereby we're scanning these people, doing a fibre scan and then cross matching that information with the new biomarker which we're developing. And so we'll get those results hopefully in the next few months, but also cross analyze results from Germany and see how they compare as well. It's a very new, it's obviously um, a new method that we're developing, it'd be a new ELISA assay. And the purpose of that ELISA assay is that currently, as most people know, there are no very good biomarkers available for um, characterize an extent of liver injury liver injury you know people might have fatty liver um, steatohepatitis or fibrosis but when someone presents their GP or a &E really they have no idea unless they do um, a biopsy ultimately they wouldn't know the extent of the liver injury so what we're doing at the moment is developing a new test a blood-based test which will um, based on some of the research we've done which will tell us exactly how much injury has occurred and we're correlating that with a fibre scan. So we know exactly how well much this marker changes in relation to the extent of liver injury as well. Mm. Ultimately, people can't have biopsies, so we need a, another form of really of a rapid, quick test really. And so what this new method hopefully will show is that um, someone coming in straight away, have a blood test, they'll know exactly this person has just fatty liver, this person has inflammation, this person has fibrosis, cirrhosis. And so obviously we're at a very early stage, you know, we're only going to get the results in the next few months or so and depending on how those results appear, we are hopefully then uh, might do larger, more larger based studies. At the moment our sample is, it's not too small, it's about 100 or so, which gives us a good enough information to ascertain its usefulness, but then we we'll hope to pilot it in further in some of the um, hospital labs as well. Predominantly anyone um, obviously has um, and that can either be either acute or chronic alcohol consumption or history of alcohol abuse. Um, we're obviously excluding people who have viral hepatitis, for example, and other forms of liver disease. But ultimately, um, it's some evidence of previous alcohol history, really, of alcohol abuse.